Welcome everyone. Welcome to the UWA Healthcare Business Review. So we aim to provide you a clear insight of the opportunities and the challenges that new emerging technologies could bring to our hospital. Today we will talk about machine learning. So first, let me introduce my two colleagues, Wasim and Ahmed. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you, Sergio. You're welcome, guys. Machine learning, actually, it's a subset of artificial intelligence. It relies on statistical techniques that enable machines to improve a, a task with experience. Actually, neural nets aren't new. The concept dates back to the 50s, but thanks to the processor power and the tremendous amount of data available, nowadays we can finally take benefits of neural net ne networks. We will see how the technology is applied to healthcare and more specifically to medical images. Technology and method applied to medical images actually are quite similar than the ones Google uses to determine what ads to show us or even technology used to auto for autonomous vehicle to label environments such as pedestrian or runabout. Basically, image recognition accuracy is based on repeated iterations. We investigate the successes and failures and try to figure out the way to improve the accuracy of the results. Machine learning aims to provide tremendous benefits in medical images analysis. The main reason is that medical images are becoming the fastest growing data sources in healthcare. Many people have predicted that radiologist activity will be automated by machine learning in the coming years, or at least the technology would help radiologists in their decision-making process. You know, it may take hours before a scan or an MRI to be handled by a radiologist. With machine learning, you just send it to the cloud on your software and it is analyzed. If something is alarming, a radiologist can be warned for emergency and further analysis. Actually, the software is able to establish a fair diagnosis and to route the patient according to the hospital processes and procedures. Before getting such results, of course, you need to train an algorithm to look at three or four dimensional images. But the issue might be to get data for this purpose. Patient health information is sensitive and we want to protect patient privacy. As a result, it's difficult to train to get enough data to train efficiently the machine learning in some cases. So now we will see the machine learning apply to another area for hospital. So Ahmed, can you speak a, a bit about it? Thank you, sir. I really appreciate Good day, everyone. I'm Ahmed al Septi. Today, I am going to introduce a new technology to support your hospital uh, operations, a health direct symptom checker application. Let's first introduce you to, to these facts. Recent statistics shows diagnosis errors contribute to approximately 10% of the patient deaths and around 20% of hospital complications. What makes that complex? Because there are 300 symptoms pointing to at least 10,000 diseases. This is due to the insufficient integration of health information technologies. As well, these those technologies implemented currently does not support the diagnosis process. Why is that? Simply because we are human. The Health Direct Symptom Checker is an algorithm-based tool for self-diagnosis. It is fed by expertise in all sorts of areas of health and medicine about sensitivity of symptoms. Basically, it diagnoses the disease based on a data provided by users against a database of diseases. In response, it will recommend an appropriate course of action based on this combination of reported symptoms, patient history, and patient circumstances. The recommended actions could range from visiting a pharmacy to dialing an emergency hotline or going directly to the hospital. Unlike human beings, these systems can process a large amount of data, perform analysis and update its databases. How this could serve your hospital operation? Implementing this technology will benefit the hospital in many ways. Most importantly, Symptom Checker is promoted to reduce unnecessary uh, hospital visits. It assists in managing the increasing demand faced by the health sector. 
It provides an excess medical information for practicing doctors. Overall, it is a useful tool <coughs> for medical doctors, nurses, and other health care providers to utilize during visits for clinical decision making. As every machine around us, few risks involve using such technology. The accuracy and updated data, having all the detailed information of all diseases, which is currently impossible. Patient awareness of the medical terms. Users are motivated by fear. It could contribute to an anxiety associated with self-diagnosis. And now, uh, I'll pass you to Wasim. Thanks, Ahmed. That was great, you know, uh, learning about um, all those machine new technologies coming in. The machine, especially the image one, the image technology and the self-checker. Right. Um, right. So now I'll be talking about uh, the social implications uh, in it and um, also some international legislations. Uh, socially, look, everyone is worried what's going to happen in life. Um, everyone's scared, especially going to a hospital. We don't know what's going to happen when you come out. So, I mean, if you look at history, even there's so many mortality uh, deaths every, all the time. Someone's uh, dying of um, undiagnosed uh, diseases or wrong prescriptions by the doctors or, or errors happening in the medical field anytime. But uh, with these new technologies in place, when we, where we have huge amounts of data of previous patients collected together, and these machines can help diagnose the problem, that would be great, I'll be honest with you. Um, it will be just like two doctors working on the same patient. Uh, the doctor can be looking at the patient, give his diagnosis, and he can get help from the system checker and from the image, um, images which come in along with it. The, the machine, the artificial intelligence, can also give its own um, prognosis of what's happening. The doctor can look into that as well, and they can both basically, he can give a better understanding of what can happen, what could be the future um, complications, and he can avert a lot of problems in the future. Um, I mean, recently there have been uh, some studies which have uh, been conducted, uh, especially for heart attacks. The deep sleep is one of the major ones where uh, patients have been taken into um, hospitals and uh, these machines have been put on them and uh, the patients go to sleep the whole night. Uh, in the morning, we see a fantastic result, what's come out, if there was any chances of the patient getting a heart attack or not. All these are very important in life. Further, uh, Google's information technology, they've also done some uh, diabetic uh, testing and uh, they're also looking how it's going to be sorted out um, with regards to diabetics or other um, medical problems which come in. Uh, the, there are also other things which uh, these machines are helping us or will be helping us rather in, um, in personalized treatments and drug discoveries or clinical trial tests and uh, epidemics which can break out. We can have predictions before that and uh, surely we should have enough data that anything that happens we are ready to tackle it. When it comes to the international uh, legislations, that's a bit tricky now. At the moment, uh, there are no legislations in place. There are, but very few. But, and uh, no one is basically, um, you can say, saying that you are responsible for it or I'm responsible for it. No doctor is ready to take the blame on them. And I guess no machine is ready to accept the blame on itself as well. So it just comes to the patient. Who is the patient going to blame? Will it be the doctor or will it be the patient? Uh, these are many issues which uh, will be faced in court. Uh, the doctors are going to be facing this as well. And uh, many people, I mean, the privacy issues come in. Who uh, is at actual fault? These issues will be addressed here. In concluding, I would say, despite the drawbacks, the benefits are tremendous. Uh, we should go for it. And uh, if it can save every, any person's life, it's great. Uh, I would like to thank Salveen and Hamid for helping us in making this uh, assignment. Thank you, guys, and um, hope thank for the you. best. And thank you for listening to us. Thank you.